Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> Welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, not the Tiger King, I promise, <laughs> Malcolm Reed. Joined by my lovely and talented, and are you into cats, Shell? Uh, uh, yeah, I like, I like cats. Cats. Miss Southern Shell is right here <laughs> with me. She likes cats today, and we are surviving through <laughs> all this quarantine. quarantine. Yeah. That's going to, I guess, be the topic for a while for most stuff, but we, what, did, we did some cooking. I mean, that's all we know. That's all, you know. Yeah, well, that's what we got to do. That's what we do. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the carne asada that you cooked this week, yes. the recipe, Free- and all the cooking we've been doing. Not not to be confused with truck meat. That's freezer meat. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have seen this, but I got to get it off my chest. <laughs> I've seen a lot of crazy stuff in my time, but Netflix has dropped this show called Tiger King. And it's a, I guess it's a documentary, horror I show, guess. thriller. Um, is it a, well, how do, it's a do docu-series. They, what do they classify? Is it like one of these? Uh, but it is nuts. Crime shows? <laughs> it's yeah. got it all. It's it, It's got it all. Just when you think you've seen it, it, it takes another turn. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for any of you. But it is, it's got murder. It's got, it's got murder for hire. It's, it's got animals. It's got animals. Large tigers. It, it's magicians. Uh, reptiles. <laughs> some cooking. I would not eat anything meth. there. Yeah. <laughs> the, the lots D-rugs. of meth. <laughs> Apparently lots of meth. It's got music. Country music. Yeah. Who knew? It's got politics. We've got a presidential <laughs> and a gubernatorial candidate on the same person. And imagine if you just gave some crazy people a lot of drugs and guns and, and big, cats. big wild animals and just let them run wild for a couple of years. And apparently they had three or four film crews filming this thing. <laughs> I don't know. I could, I could never get a grasp on if it was the dude, if Tiger King was filming it, if the guy that was trying to make his the documentary was filming it or if the Netflix people were filming it. It was all of it. Or if yeah, it was just undercover know. FBI informants <laughs> filming it. You never knew. But the memes that have come, I this is the the thing that I, I I like about it is I couldn't quit talking about the virus, and this is about this, and this, now I can't quit talking about the tiger cage. Hey, that takes our mind off. Yeah, it's a whole different <laughs> set of problems. And this was not in my notes to talk about. I just felt like I had to get that off my chest, <laughs> clear it out of my head. We just we just finished it. Yeah. So. Okay, carne asada. It's carne asada. I did that this week, and so of course everybody knows the stores. You know, it's hard to find meat in stores now. Mm-hmm. People are stocking stuff up. Um, At the butcher shop, if you have yes, to be in Pensacola. I do, have, I do have that, and that's exactly where I got the skirt steak from. Yeah. I had brought it back, and it was in my freezer. But uh, there are some places, and we'll talk, I was going to talk about that yeah. later, about where to okay, get some meat talk about for that. this time. But Carne asada. I was going through my freezer, and I, that was on top. So I said, hey, I'm going to do some carne asada. I've been asked to do it for a while, or kind of my take on it, and – what carne asada, or I call it gringo carne asada because I'm not Mexican or Spanish or Hispanic <laughs> or anyway. I just like to cook that kind of food. It's one of my favorites. And you're using we can't go, gringo. We can't go to my local favorite water and hole, the La Siesta here in town. So I said, I'm going to make me some carne asada like I get there, or at least my version of it. So yeah. that's what I did. And what carne asada means is grilled meat. Most of the time it's beef, grilled beef. Um, it's usually thin cut. Thin cut. Juice cut. Typically skirt steak. Inside, outside, it could be flank steak, it could be sirloin, it could be a flat iron, it could be it could be any kind of thin lint, thin cut of lean beef can be turned into carne asada. Is it always grilled, or could it be? Yeah, that's flat what it is. It's grilled, grilled char. You're grilled. charring the outside of that meat, and that's what that's They're what it means. Grilling it when you get it at the Mexican joint. They're flat topping it. Yeah, and that was what I was one. That was one thing I wrote down to talk about. It's different than the kind that I've ordered when I go out because most of the time they're just cooked. Well done or more, mm-hmm. and it's cooked on a – most time it's not char-cooked. I mean, we're talking, you know, typical town, you know, American-Mexican restaurants. Yeah. And that's, and it's, that's how they serve carne asada. It's usually you make it for tacos. It'll come out sizzling, kind of like fajita. It's a strip mall yeah. Mexican. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I have got it where it's a whole piece of beef. Like, they'll give you the piece of skirt steak or – Oh, really? Or a thin ribeye or yourself? something. You cut it up it's yourself. Not already yeah, it's sliced. not already sliced sometimes. Sometimes it is sliced. Already tacoed. I've, I, I, it's something I order all the time. Usually you give me some chopped cilantro and maybe a little onion. Mm-hmm. I always ask for some of the little tortillas. The hottest Diablo sauce they can bring yeah. me to drizzle over it and I'm you know, give me some tortillas and I'm good. 
So that's what I made this week, my version of it. Now, to make carne asada, you need a marinade, and it's about fresh ingredients. Well, so, see, at the Mexican restaurant, are they marinating it? Yeah, yeah. You think so? You, there's some, like, Mexican grocery stores you can go in, and they already have it, carne asada meat marinated for you. You can yeah. pick it up already by the pound or whatever. It's been marinated. It's ready to go home and grill right away. So it's all about the marinade, and that's where you get the flavors in it. It's not like you're dry rubbing it or anything yeah, like that, yeah. which well, I don't see why you couldn't. But it's usually typically a wet marinade. The meat's been soaked in it, so it tenderizes it. All those acids work on the meat and start breaking down the, the a tougher cut of meat and making it soft, making it to where it just melts in your mouth. Um, typically, it's fresh fruit juices. So I, I I had some lime, and I had some little – I said orange juice, but these are – what are, we call them cuties. What are they? Little They're kind of like tangerines, tangerines, I guess. Or yeah, we just, lemon tines or yeah, something. We just squeezed them. We squeezed them. Got all. Got me a they quarter had cup a of juice. A lot of juice. Yeah, don't take many of those, yeah. does it? And then uh, I think it was about two or three limes to get a quarter cup. Well, if and you were in a pinch, you could use. You could use the bottled lime juice yeah. if you wanted to. Bottled but I, I like the I like orange. the fresh angle. Um, and I, you could make the jalapeno. Optional too. Yeah, you, that's pretty much up to you. You can put whatever you want in there. Flavor. You can put some cilantro, some onion, all that good stuff in there if yeah. you wanted to. I put what I had so I didn't have to go to the store because we're trying to avoid stores. As much as so, possible, So, yeah. so you know, I'm trying to – that's been my thing lately, like, trying to come up with recipes, and that's what I wanted to talk about later on. But um, for this one, I had some orange juice. Or had We made some orange juice and lime juice, a little bit of canola oil in the pantry, a splash of vinegar, uh, grande gringo Mexican seasoning. You could throw in your regular seasons you want, any you want. If you got a favorite Mexican season, if you have one of them packets of taco season, fajita, fajita season, mix, and all that yeah. stuff would work. But you need some some of those spices in it. And then I rounded it out with some water, and then I chopped up um, uh, some garlic. So I had some garlic in there, and then I had a jalapeno. I just chopped up fine, and all that went in my marinade. And so I took the skirt steak, thawed it out because it was froze, um, Really didn't trim it much, but sometimes you might have to trim them up, get some of that excess fat or silver skin off, because all that's just going to be tough. Is um, a skirt stick typically that marbled? Yeah, yeah, it's typically that's it's, typically the way it is. Yeah, yeah it's okay. it's a marbled up piece of meat because it's it's kind of I guess it's diaphragm the inside part and the outside's yeah. kind of the flap of the, of the of the inside you know lining yeah. or whatever or, or down the outer edge of the belly if you think about it like that on a cow that's where it comes from. So mm -hmm. it's it's marbled up, it doesn't get. Um, you know, it's not it's not a thick cut of meat usually. I mean, this was. I mean, I, I know in the video, some people said it looked like it's thick. It really wasn't thick at all. Yeah, I think I mean, it swelled up a little when it hit the it hot could, grate. Yeah, but it wasn't thick. But um, and that's and drop it in a bag and pour that marinade over it and just let it sit in the refrigerator for a while. I did two hours the day I cooked it, but it would have been better if I'd have let it go six to even overnight. I mean, I don't think you could. I mean, I'm not saying marinated a week, but I don't think 24 hours in a marinade would, yeah. would do it any harm. Yeah, but two hours gave it a it was a ton of flavor. flavor. Yeah, it was. It was perfect. Yeah, I mean, two hours is. It's. It had plenty of flavor it in it. Did it was very delicious. The only other thing I hit it with was when I took it out of the marinade before I I grilled it. I seasoned it with some kosher salt, and just just to give it a pop. I mean, I guess you could if you wanted to add some more seasonings, but I think that's all it really needed was some salt. I wanted that, you know, beefy crust on the salty beefy mm -hmm. crust on the outside, and then get the flavors of the marinade and all that on the inside. And it turned out fantastic. Um, I grilled it on a Weber. Why'd you go with the Weber? I just want—I just needed to grill hot coals. It doesn't matter what kind it was. You could do that. You could have done it on any. You could build, put some rocks in a circle and built your fire and cook them down and put your grate over that. It'd work. Could you have used a pellet? Um, you wouldn't have gotten that crusty. Egg. It wouldn't have got it seared up. If I was going, if I was going to do a charcoal. pellet grill, I would have probably used my Memphis grill and pulled out the little fire pot cover and, and where you can sear. Cooked it right over some flame because I really like the flame on it. You can't beat meat charcoal. Charred. Yeah. Charcoal meat, man. That's it's so good. Charcoal when it when it changes the outside of it and the flames jump up and kiss it a little bit and kind of Make give it all the little crunchies good. and all that. Mm -hmm. Smell it smelled so good. You didn't use grill grates. No, no, you could have. I was just going for more of an authentic cooked over a yeah. fire style. I mean, there wouldn't Getting be nothing wrong. Crust. I'm not trying to it's really not about trying to get it pretty, trying to get it grill marked up. It's not presentation thing. The presentation on it is is some good mid rare uh, meat sitting on top of some you know sauteed char 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 sauteed up vegetables and that's what I did to go with it. Um, right as that skirt stay, it took about what eleven almost eleven minutes I think I didn't really um, I think it was like ten and a half eleven something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think you said it was eleven. Yeah. By the time we pulled it off, wasn't long. Uh uh. I did I did my timer, flipped it at five, kind of moved it around some during that. 
set me another timer for five minutes and really kind of forgot about it and got my vegetables going. I took a flat iron skillet, just kind of scooted the steak over, set it right there on my grate over the coals, let it heat up with a little bit of oil. And then I had my vegetables already chopped up and ready to go. And I just, I happened to have some uh, bell pepper and onion in the fridge. And then I had another jalapeno, so I sliced it up and then, you wanted some garlic, whole garlic. Well, we had it. You, yeah. We'd open a little bag. So you Didn't could use them, it. so we just threw them in there, yeah. too. And they were they were amazing in there. They picked up a lot of flavor. And we didn't put them on our tacos. We were just popping them. I just like garlic. It's yeah. good for you. Hey, it is. In this time, it's, you got to get all the nutrients and stuff you can get. It's great for your um, digestive system. Yeah. So, um, we used, uh, a lot of people asked what kind of pan that was. That was a large 12-inch square cast iron griddle. And they have them on Amazon for forty bucks, but it was a it was a Lodge brand. Where we found it, like a yard sale or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> Did you buy it. <laughs> My mother gave it to us oh, for Christmas say. gift. Okay, because it. it's a I use it all the time. Yeah, it's a grilled cheese cooking machine. That's the best thing it does. <laughs> it cooks the best grilled cheese, doesn't it? <laughs> but that was it, man. I cooked that beef, let it rest while the vegetables, they were done about seven minutes. And they were simple. All you did was I hit did them nothing with, to them. Yeah, all uh. Canola oil and little then gringo. Of gringo, yeah. You could just put salt and pepper and nothing on them. Yeah. I mean, um, I will say this if you don't like it as spicy, cut back on the jalapeno because as those jalapenos cook down, the juice from them, I didn't de seed or nothing. I just sliced them thin. It bled over to the onions and the bell pepper. Yeah. <clears throat> but it wasn't too hot to me, was it to you? It wasn't too hot, no. Especially when you're eating it on a taco. It gave it. Really good flavor. Flavor. Ton- yeah. It was flavor town. But you could tell that they were those onions and peppers were spicier than regular. Yeah, like then you like peppers. like you'd done something to them. Yeah. It wasn't the gringo that gave them the heat. Uh-huh. It was just the juice from the jalapeno cooking. Well, the jalapenos were real thin, so they kind of melted into everything else. I yeah, hope. I did. I tried to cut them as thin as I could get them with a knife. Yeah. They were pretty thin slices. But you know, when I'm eating jalapenos uh, on a taco, that's how I like to eat them. Yeah, I, agree. I don't want them. I, I don't mind them fresh, but as long as they're cut paper thin, where you get the essence of that jalapeno, it's not like I'm trying to bite into a, a big, big piece of jalapeno. Yeah. It's more of that flavor of it, and that's how a lot of times when um, when I serve them. So we made tacos with these family style. Put the skirt steak right over. The vegetables, we took it inside. That's why I didn't make no tacos outside because we was fixing to eat dinner. Yeah. And had I mean, some, you got you to gotta cook smart <laughs> this time of year. You, we served it with some warm flour tortillas, mm-hmm. the gringo shells, because <laughs> uh, authentic style would probably be more corn shells. But, you know, Michael likes the flour. You like I the flour. Too. I don't mind either way. So we went flour, and we had we always have some of those in the fridge. They seem to last forever. Yeah, they will. And uh, we had some... some uh, our version of guacamole, which is just avocado, um, some pico, some, what else do we put in there? Some garlic, some, some cilantro, some grande gringo, uh, some lime juice. It's real simple, but you could buy, you can buy that holy guacamole stuff. Yeah, or, it's not bad. No, it's not bad. It's Kroger just, actually sells one um, with the pico. Already in it? Yeah. Like the, in the, in the garden a, section? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a pretty good you know, substitute for fresh. I like the guacamole, and I like cilantro with it too. Mm-hmm. But on top, oh, kind of like dress it, and and then hot sauces. What's what's your favorite Mexican hot sauce? Um, it's the one in that little short stubby bottle. Valentina. Yes, Valentina. Yeah, I was gonna hope you said that. Yeah, we've got like Cholula, we've got Tapatio, and none of them are uh, bad. What's the other? El Yucatan. None of uh, them are bad. I like the Valentina too. The the our hot sauce. It's the medium. The hot sauce section takes up half a shelf. Well, you know, my hot sauce is more of a southern hot sauce. To it me. is. It's, it's more not garlicky. A, and it's, I mean, it's not bad with Mexican food, yeah. but Valentina has a real chili flavor. That's yeah. what I like about it. I don't know if it's cumin in it or what they have it spiced up with, but it just has more of a um, that that kind of flavor that I associate when I'm eating tacos. <laughs> I like it. I agree. Uh, so, what do you serve it with? Um, Side dishes, not like. What do we serve with? Black beans. And uh, some rice, but not like, so I like just the Mexican restaurant style rice. Mm-hmm. Typically when you get carne out of Mexican restaurant, it's going to come with some beans and rice, the refried beans with cheese on top and the kind of orange uh, yeah, rice. Mexican you don't like rice. that? No, I don't. I do. I don't like the beans and I don't like refried beans. I don't like Mexican rice. I do. It, it, it's, it's white rice. They just add like some chicken, uh, Chicken base to it, like it's almost like a bouillon, but kind of a liquid form. Yeah. And then they um, use a little bit of 
uh, salsa and maybe some onions and that's all that's in it and it's just rice so it gives it kind of this orangey color from all that and it's just it's just regular old rice but you like the cilantro lime rice I think. yeah the fluffy so that's what white, we had yeah it's just one you, cup of rice two cups of water <laughs> And, and then just then, throw in a little like lime I, juice, lime zest. And I do cilantro. it all at the end. Yeah. So so when when you get yeah, through with you that, make your rice as normal. Yeah. You know the secret. What's the secret? Two tablespoons of butter. <laughs> Butter's For real. the secret. Butter, lime in juice, the, a little in, lime zest. In butter the, in, in the, the bowl. Cilantro. No, no, no. When it comes out. Yeah, okay. that's what it makes. It kind of makes that rice a little creamy tasting. Mm-hmm. But it's not like liquidy. It's still it just coats the the butter coats the outside of the rice and it picks up the flavors from the lime zest and the lime juice and then you season it with a little salt and pepper yeah but um it's very simple and you'll think it's like a fancy rice because it's got the cilantro and the lime and all that in it but it's just white rice it ain't nothing to it and the black beans i like to um you did those yeah i like to take a little you can use just tomatoes but we had pico already so i took a little pico and sauteed it a little bit i think i might have added a little garlic too and sauteed it in a pan. And after that kind of got fragrant and, and started cooking down, maybe two to four minutes, then I throw in my black beans that I've drained and rinsed. Get all the liquid off of them? Yeah, get all the liquid off of them, um, rinse them, then throw that in there. And let them cook a little bit, and then I'll add a little uh, water. Chicken base to little, that? Yeah, a little chi- water, a little chicken base, and a little seasoning. That's it. Yeah. It's a little grande gringo. Yeah, it's and easy. you think it's... Canned like, black beans that you drain. This is, that's how to make canned black beans something really special. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do that. I'll do that for a side on a, next time I do a taco recipe. Yeah. Because it's a good one. Heck yeah. The rice and the beans are. They go with anything. And kids love them. And we talked about doing it for this video, but I think it was fine. I think the video yeah, was good yeah. without it. Yeah. That's something we can, you know, put my side chick on. <laughs> Got a new name. My side chick. You're in charge of the sides. <laughs> Don't you like that? Ain't that good? I think it's cute. Side chick. <laughs> I that think it's cute. New, that could be I a don't new know blog. if I like you calling me your side chick. Why? You want to be? You want to be the bottom one? <laughs> bottom B? <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. I kind of am. <laughs> I'll right. hold it down. That's right. You can be side chick too. I, I, that's enough for me. Um, I'm, I'm not talking. I'm talking about some sides. I know. That's. <laughs> I just to go with the meat. I think it's cute. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, anything you do different with that recipe? Um, you know, yeah, because that that marinade works on all kinds of meats, not just beef. You could marinate pork in it. I you could marinate pork chicken in it, good. like chicken breast or chicken I thighs. Chicken breast being good in you could marinate shrimp in it. It would go with all that, and so you could do. You talk about difference, man. You could take it anyway. That's just a fresh Mexican style marinade. It's easy and simple. You can make it what you want it by adding some ingredients you want or take out some or change up the juice, use some different kinds of fruit. I think the citrus works really well, but heck, you could use grapefruit or you could probably add a little pineapple or yeah. even something like that. Something just to give it, stay in, you know, stay in that family because you pick up some sweetness from it, but it's really the acids the, that really help the meat. I, I really like that marinade. It's the good. The flavor of that skirt steak. Skirt steak, yeah. yeah. Like, it was incredibly good. Really, really good. Yeah, you know? if, I mean, if I had my choice, I would have added mushrooms to the vegetables, maybe yeah. some tomatoes to go with it. We'd have had to go to the store. I like, yeah. But I like all different kinds of stuff in it like that. Um, you know, besides doing uh, tacos, you could serve that like a, a like a carne bowl. You yeah. Know how you can get yeah. the rice and beans and Keto. the steak on it. You lose the carbs from it. And, you know, or take out the rice, do the cauliflower rice, whatever you wanted. You yeah. Could, you could or use just that. the beans. But a lot of you know a lot of the Mexican dishes you get there, it's just different um, ways to serve the same kind of meat a lot of times. Yeah. So that could wrap up in a burrito. You could make a quesadilla with it. You could heck, you could do all, you know you could do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, let me see what I'll wrote down. <laughs> eating it just plain like or salad. It would make a great like, yeah. You, you do I a could, salad and then throw that meat and some of the vegetables over it. So you've got that warm element with your cold greens and stuff. That would be very good. It was too good to throw up in a quesadilla, though. You know, I wanted, you know. I don't know. It was I too like good. I, I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying that, that steak was so yeah. good. I just was just eating it, just steak, and then get a bite of the peppers. and. We ate the whole thing. Yeah. That was dinner. I mean, no, of course, we've been trying to hold out and only eat one meal a day while you're on quarantine. But, <laughs> but we were <laughs> all hungry work. at that point. That doesn't work anymore. <laughs> So, 
that was that was dinner, and it was I think it was a great video. Um, it turned out the shooting I'm happy was simple. With it. it was yeah. it was easy. That was one of the easier ones to do because the good. hardest part was just letting it marinate for two hours. You don't get any easier. I don't even think. Do we have much many cuts? At, did you stop the camera while we were filming the cook? Yeah. I mean, I didn't know because it was because I, I just I rolled the audio the whole time. Yeah. And I just let it roll. I mean, we were just standing there for ten minutes. It wasn't bad. Everything as long as you have all your mise en place or whatever. How do you say it? Mise en place. All your stuff cut up and prepped up and ready to go. Oh, is that what it. that means? Yeah, you never okay. heard that. No, that's one of them fancy French terms. <laughs> mise en place. It just means prepped up, ready to go. Everything's in its right place. So, have my vegetables going. Have yeah. my little bottle of oil sitting there. Yeah. Have my iron skillet ready to go. And you can get have, all that prepped up while it's yeah. marinating. That's what, I, that's what I did. Marinate up, throw it in. Yeah. I cut all. I said, I you know, inside did all that stuff. Did all my prep. Um, got the steak out. Had my grill fired up, and off we went. And we were done cooking within. Probably didn't take thirty minutes for the whole film and wrap and everything. The rest of it yeah. was. It wasn't long. It takes longer than you think. I think. I lose yeah. track. Yeah. I try to get me in the moment. <laughs> so I wanted to talk a little bit about quarantine cooking. All right. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. I'm trying What's to I'm your... trying to look at my notes real fast to see where I'm at. Before we wrap up. Yeah. Before I, before I walk, wrap it up. Okay. That's where I'm at. How we're coping with this big <laughs> dumb quarantine. First off, have y'all seen Tiger King? <laughs> It'll get your mind off quarantine real quick. <laughs> You start worried about your neighbors. <laughs> we see any big cats? Did you know? Here's a here's a, a fact that I found interesting. At the end of that thing, they said there's five to ten thousand big cats in the United States. That kills me. There, there's, there's more 5, in captivity. That they, they're not sure about. Yeah, yeah. Five <laughs> to like, ten. Five to ten. I was 000. like, we need to get a grip on. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> and, the, and the whole thing they were talking about. They're trying to do regulations on owning these big cats and breeding them. I'm like, yes, I'm all for it. <laughs> you do not need to have. Tigers at your house. I agree. And That's I don't care. Crazy. These ain't zoos. These are just people who just put up some fence in out back and yeah. called it a zoo just because they were charging people off the street to come in. There's got to be some regulation on that. <laughs> that there was a few people they had real zoos, but the people they were selling it to was just they don't know who they sell. Yeah, Child, there's no. They burn up all the paperwork. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, it's a crazy show. That's what I've been doing in quarantine. Besides cooking. Trying well, to get get this in my mind, how this fellow had this whole operation going. In Oklahoma, no doubt. Well, I figured people in Oklahoma it. wouldn't stand for that. No, he got 19% of the government, the the governor Don't vote. That's what shocked me. When they showed the results of the... So he ran for governor of Oklahoma, and he got 19%. I was expecting them to be like 0.02%. Yeah. No. He was a can- he was a he took some votes from somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My goodness, can you imagine that? I have so many questions. I want to know more about the unsolved husband. I feel murder. like they rushed that one. <laughs> I feel like they rushed it. I want to know where all the ex husbands are today. Oh, Carol killed him. She paid him to tie. <laughs> I can tell you where that husband is. I know, but I want to know more about that. <laughs> uh, I want to know if that pizza place is still open and selling pizzas because that no. zoo's still currently open. Hey, it's got me rethinking my whole eat, eating anything when I go out anymore. Of if it's not something I kind of know. That one messed you up more than I can't, anything. I can't think of it. They not not with all this hand washing and stuff I've getting accustomed to. <laughs> and now they're feeding people truck meat in places. And when I mean so truck in meat. This, in this show, they were using okay. old Walmart meat. Walmart was discontinuing stuff, and instead of just throwing it in the dumpster, they would send it over to the zoo, and they were feeding it to the tigers. Well, then they started talking about, well, the crew would pull it out and and pull out stuff for, like, their lunches, and, and this is what they were living off of, was old one Walmart fella, truck meat. Then come to find out, they opened a pizza place, and were using this old Walmart truck meat for the pizzas. He had an original name for that, too. It was called Zooters. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, we got to quit talking about this. Yeah, this is not the, not the, uh, <laughs> hey, you can tell quarantine's getting to me. But so coming back down to it, let's learn to cook at home Have and not go out to zoos and eat. <laughs> Talk about the zoos and eat. I'm never going to look at the cat house grill at the Memphis Zoo the same I know, again. I know. It's right there by, that's what it's called, isn't it? The cat house zoo or something, or the cat house grill. Or... It gives no meaning to the phrase, the monkeys are running the zoo. Oh, it sure does. <laughs> But cooking at home, and right now we're cooking with limited ingredients. That's kind what of, yeah. that's what I wanted to talk about today. Like, what? How are we doing? How are we coming up with recipes? Yeah, yeah. We're, um, 
I mean, I keep a, I keep idea. a deep freeze. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure most people do have a deep freeze at home, and I, mine stays full of meat. I'm always if I see something. You've heard me say it that when I go to a grocery store or Sam's or anywhere, I'm headed to the meat department just to see. And if something catches my eye, I see a really good piece of look, looking piece of meat, I'll get it home, take it home, vacuum seal it, put it in my freezer. I deer hunt in the fall, so I've got you know deer meat put up, and then I've got stuff that you know, like Kevin at the butcher shop, and he sends me stuff um, sends me stuff to cook with videos. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll you know I'll have some of that stuff in there, or just different things. I've still got a pork belly, another pork belly from Cheshire yep. in my deep freeze, but now is the time where. All that's coming in handy because we're having to live off of it. It's not yeah. just about videos anymore. This is about living. Yeah. I'm uh, kind of excited about getting to start utilizing, you know, being forced to utilize everything we have in the freezer. Yeah. I, think I, that's I mean, it's a good, good thing. thing. It is a good thing. Yeah. And, and knowing that we don't have to run to the grocery store yeah. and hoard stuff like that. I mean, I'm not trying to buy out all the chicken or something. I would like to have some chicken. That's one thing I don't keep in the freezer. Um, I actually have some. A little bit that I found deep down, and so that's what. So I'm you're like. cooking that tonight? Yeah, I'm cooking. I'm cooking some chicken breast tonight. I'm, I'm doing, and I had that talk about. Um, we're going to do um, some, some shorter videos, not really the same style. I mean, kind of. It's just me doing. It. I ain't really worried about the recipe. It's showing you. Yeah, but I'm not going to pull out the big camera and do all the editing and stuff like that. We're going to keep it pretty basic. Yeah, basic videos of what we're cooking for dinner. Yeah, more like tonight. Back. I'm doing a chicken. I've got a smoked sausage laid out. And I'm going to do a, kind of a chicken sausage jambalaya pasta with a cream sauce. I've got a jar of Alfredo sauce mm-hmm. in my pantry. And so I'm going to, you know, I've got a little bit of that bell pepper I didn't use all of for the video that I'm going to dice up, saute with some onion, and make a, a little easy little dinner for us. Yeah, and we're going to try to film it. Yeah, and that way and people see can kind of see what we're doing. But that's what we're doing. We're working with limited stuff. And I think a lot of people are. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to get creative in this time. You know, that's kind of makes you think of that show Chopped where they get the basket and see what you can create with it. Yeah. That's kind of what we're doing. I mean. <laughs> we, you had the idea that um, you said, don't use all my lemon. Don't use all my uh, orange juice. Yeah. Because I need it for my marinade. And then you said, but I guess I could use margarita mix. <laughs> <laughs> <That was it. laughs> you started thinking. You like, got to be oh. thinking of what you got, man. Yeah. I mean, now's the time. That's. Just to get creative, and luckily we still got internet. So then, yeah, <laughs> because I mean, I get some ideas from that. If I run out, have you ever looked up something like what substitutes for this? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. So we got some good resources still, and uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully everybody's gonna make it through this no problem, and it's not as bad as they claim. But we're all, I think everybody's kind of scared a little. I know it's fresh it's, on everybody's mind. Yeah. Um. So what do you have? What was your favorite? meal that we cooked this past week because we've been cooking in every meal um besides the carne asada besides aside from the carne asada. there was a so we did a simple uh, pasta dish and it was just spaghetti noodles that you boiled yeah we took some uh was those thigh, boneless thighs that you'd found no or? it was breasts but i it would was, use that it was like those little thin airline breasts like, or not yeah. airline they're just thin cutlets of breast yeah you cut them up and sauteed them and then the sauce was, it really wasn't like a pasta sauce. It was more of like. It was just a touch of cream cheese and some, oh, use some pa- pasta water. But that's what it was. It was like a yeah. pasta water sauce. And the cream cheese thickened it, squeezed a little bit. I don't know if y'all have seen them, but they have these Swanson's that makes these concentrates. It's like a chicken broth concentrate and a beef based concentrate. Instead of having to, you know, make bouillon or something, they're great for yeah. sauces. You can put like a teaspoon of these for in quick dishes, sauces. and it flavors it. Like you use it in the black beans. I use it in the rice, mm-hmm. the chicken. Um, you know, it, and it worked great it in that pasta. Adds sauce. some great flavor to stuff like that. Yeah, and if you need to wake up a dish, it will. And then we had some uh, little Roma tomatoes. And I roasted those. those in the oven instead of, um, you know. Just them in the, yeah. It gave them almost like a sun dried texture. Yeah. You know how a sun dried tomato it still has all that flavor, but it's concentrated, but it's not like a wet tomato. All the juice is gone, and it kind of leaves it almost like a with some texture to it, like a chewiness. And so it's almost like you're eating kind of a piece of meat a little bit. Yeah. It had it had it went, with the chicken and the pasta. It really went great with it. With Parmesan cheese over the top, just the old good. shaky Parmesan cheese yeah. is what we had. <laughs> That was you probably my favorite things. new thing because I don't know where you got that one from, but it was was that a Pinterest or something or, yeah, or just throw stuff together because I mean, kind of. 
a little bit of both. We've been doing a little bit of all that. Yeah. Just creating what you got. If we find something and you don't have it, omit it and, or try to substitute something else and yeah. see. But that was Getting my favorite creative. quick little thing we did. We do, we also did another. Uh, we did. I'm trying to remember. Last night was ground pork tacos. Like mm-hmm. we, that's what I thought out a package of ground pork. We didn't have any ground beef. That's the one thing we don't have. It's some, I've got some ground deer. got plenty of it. And we've been using it, but I don't. What did we I don't use usually ground deer for the other day. Sloppy, sloppy joes. joes. Those were good. Ground deer, sloppy joes. Yeah. Yep. Just was it? That was the old can of sandwich, wasn't it? Heck yeah! I found that in the pantry. I don't know how old it was. <laughs> <laughs> it ate, and it ate good. <laughs> sloppy well, joes. We even had uh, hamburger buns, which yeah. I was expecting us to have to eat a uh, old school loaf bread. Loaf bread. <laughs> Do you ever grow up eating loaf bread burgers or loaf bread sloppy joes? Yeah, I hate, I have. Them. I hate it. It always like oh, melted through and you just have the crust with like this pink glob like in the middle. My grandma would make her or my granny Ugh. would make hamburgers like that. They didn't buy hamburger buns. You just had white loaf bread, you know, and put it's the hamburger the in it. I hated it. But we it had just it turned into this it. greasy uh, glob yes. in your hand and you <laughs> put the fingerprints in it. It's it was not worst. McDonald's, like Eddie Murphy used to say. It, it reminds <laughs> me of that Eddie Murphy joke. He's yeah. exactly right, yeah. But um we did some leg quarters this week that yeah. you'd you'd had. We've been running through our stuff. That's no wonder good. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. We've got, you know, some, um, we do have some like Mexican rice and, and some pasta salads and those Uncle Ben's ready rice and things like that, um, you know, for size. Yeah. Mac and cheese. Yeah. We, got, we taught Michael how to make mac and cheese for the first time. He's been having to learn life skills every day. <laughs> so one day it was how to make your own mac and cheese. You got to do it all. One day I taught him how to fry a bologna sandwich. <laughs> I taught him how to uh, wash his own clothes and fold up towels. But that's uh, important stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, while he's here, I mean, he's doing schoolwork, but it doesn't take up his full day. That's one thing that I've, I'm not a teacher by any means, but I did not realize that you can blow through <laughs> all the stuff they're supposed to do in about an hour and a half. <laughs> and then. I guess I need to line him up and take him to the bathroom. <laughs> but <laughs> take him for recess and go sit him down for lunch and then make him go wash his hands every time in between and just do this whole thing. To have someone make, come in and speak to him about don't doing drugs and do the morning and doing assembly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's trying, what they spend the day doing at school. Yeah. It's, it's not doing the work. The work don't take that long. But I can imagine. I, can, I, I the most respect for teachers. I do not know how they do it. I have no idea. They're the most underpaid. You know, them and, and police and fire and EMS and all that, those are so much underpaid people because, the, I mean, could you imagine taking care of 20 to 30 kids, trying to get them to do something? How how much of a, oh, man, it's scary. I'd panic. It turns out Malcolm's much better of a teacher than I am. But you, that's kind of what you do. You are kind of a teacher. Yeah, but I couldn't do it. With, with my kid, I could do it. <laughs> but I'm talking all these multiple kids. No. <laughs> And well, I said something to Michael kid, about it. He's like, well, Dad, you know, there's bad kids, and they're always <laughs> getting in trouble, and so that takes up a lot of time. And, then, and so he was breaking it down to me. Like, he agreed with me. Like, hey, Dad, I can do all this work, you know. You just tell me what, how much work you want me to do, lay it out here, and I'll mow through it, you know. That's nothing, but the, it's, it's all that goes to it that takes up the day. And we've been using um, the P.E. guy. It, that's a good thing, yeah. yeah. It's a YouTube. There's a YouTube, What's his name, P.E. Joe? or Something like that. Something like that. Or what it was. It's, it might be Joe TV or something. No relation to Joe Exotic. <laughs> but it's something like that, the PE guy. And he does it every day at 9 a.m. He does a, like a 30-minute workout for kids. And it's, it's a serious workout. Like, yeah. I've been loving watching Michael do that. I'll sit there with my wife. He'll sit in your recliner and <laughs> I need to, wag that finger. <laughs> I need to get up and do it with him bad. It's, oh, well. So, what do we have planned for this weekend? Um, so, PK's, I thought, come up with a great idea. And um, they're doing kind of, it's not really a promotion. They're just trying to, to get people outdoors and cooking. Everybody knows we need the vitamin D from the sun. And this weekend, we're going to finally have the next few days are going to be sunny before it turns back cold, it looks like. No rain until Saturday night, I think. But they're doing stay in, hashtag stay in cookout. And we're going to participate because we were planning on cooking Saturday anyway outside. Yeah. And what they're doing, they're just wanting people to um, share what they're cooking, whether it's just take a photo of it and use that hashtag on it, whatever. I don't care what platform it is. 
we want to do it on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, whatever you're yeah. into. But it's just a way, and you don't have to have a PK. They say use any grill, whatever you want. Just show. Uh, it's kind of a way to get everybody's mind off what's going on to get outside, enjoy cooking, and yeah, whatever it is. Up, so yeah. I'm, I'm, we're gonna do, we're gonna do some Instagram stories on it. Um, I, I talked to uh, Brad Barrett with Grill Greats for a little while yesterday, checking in, seeing how things were going over in Atlanta, and uh, he's going to be doing something. So he's he's got a, a live uh, Instagram thing he's trying out, and he's going to start doing more of it. He asked me if I wanted to come on there Saturday morning. I think it's going to be about 9 o'clock Central Time, Saturday morning on Instagram. We're going to try to do a split screen with Grill Great and me, and we're, I'm going to do some brunch. I got, a, I got an idea for a – um, well, I got some old bagels. I got some sausage, <laughs> some so- Your breakfast mom makes sausage patties. Sausage, so yeah, we got a got bunch it. of that in the freezer. So I'm gonna do like a a, br- a brunch burger. I'm, I'm gonna do a, a sausage patties with uh, probably some bacon and a fried egg and some cheese on a bagel, and make a bloody mary. And you, I think you uh, I'm, gonna squeeze some more a, juice and got an old bottle yeah, of I champagne. Found a bottle of champagne <laughs> in the wine cabinet. So we're gonna start our Saturday off, stay in, cook out with the brunch and be on Instagram with the grill grate. And then I'm going to cook, uh, to Bacanya, right? Uh, yeah. So we put it on, um, Instagram. Like you, you, you were trying to decide between doing a tri tip or Bacanya. Yeah. And that's one Kevin sent me that I've had in there. Yeah. Um, and it's a whole, I'm going to do it on the PK and I'm going to do like a, I think I'm going to cut it and still, you know, normally Bacanya. Will you tell you what one? Yeah. What one? Pecania. Oh, when I looked, it was like fifty nine to forty two or whatever. Fifty five to forty five. Which yeah. I voted for Pecania. I Did you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, that's what I'm doing, and I'm gonna cut it into. So normally you cut it into strips and kind of skewer yeah, yeah. it and cook it over with just some salt. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it different. I'm gonna reverse sear it on PK. I'm gonna set my three sixty up for some reverse sear. I'm gonna cut it into some strips, almost like some steaks. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, get it cooked down some, reverse sear, and then I'm gonna put it over on the high side and. and sear it off and get that fat sizzling and melting and we're going to slice it and eat it like steak so it's going to be picanha steak pretty much i love picanha it's, it's so going to be good it's not i mean i guess is that really yeah. picanha it's really just sirloin at that yeah point. but um sort of cap how do they serve it at the um texas state brazil they do they do a garlic picanha or is that a garlic sirloin i'm thinking I, of. it's the same thing it is i guarantee you that because that's it, the picanha cut comes from sirloin it's the style kind of Bacanya like Brazilian, style Brazilian style is the actual doing the folding it. Yeah. it and cooking it yeah. over the hot coals with salt. Okay, I'm gonna put some rub. I'm gonna I'm gonna doctor it up, and get oh, some yeah. flavor going, yeah. get that fat render, you know, sizzling because the fat's delicious on it. That's the best. I can't part. wait. Yeah, it's gonna be good. It's some of the better beef that I've had. Oh, it, it is it's cooked right. It is. I mean, I'm excited about that. Heck yeah, that, good. And, um, is it a high quality picanha? I'm sure it is coming from Kevin. What man, is it? It's a, it's the that gum real deal. What's the Bagger. real deal? Oh, really? Yeah. A nine. Dang. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be good. And you're gonna try then, to do a chimichurri. We are uh, gonna, get I'm gonna to make to go a, to the store. Yeah, some... we're gonna, we're trying to do. So this is I had this to talk about too. Uh, ways to get some products without having to go in the store. Yeah. But um, I'm gonna do a, a chimichurri if they'll. We do click list at Kroger. And it's where you can go to their website, sign up. And they don't you, cancel it. <laughs> yeah, and they give you a time. It's been busy, but I think it's calming down since yeah. things is kind of going back to normal. But what they do, they go pull all your groceries for you, bring it out to your car. Everybody knows what ClickList is. Well, okay, great. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing, and we're going to see what we get. It's kind of like... It is kind of like roulette. Put the wishes on there. See what you get. <laughs> also... Oh, oh, you're also doing one other thing Saturday. Are you going to do um, oh, some stuffed peppers? If I can get them. If I can get some of those little tricolor peppers, I'm going to lay out a pack of deer meat or deer sausage. Uh, um, it's like deer breakfast sausage, spicy. I'm going to mix it with some cream cheese. We do have some cream cheese. I'm going to brown the sausage, mix it with some cream cheese, split them peppers open, stuff them, and then uh, just cook them like that. So it's like... But you know, you're not going to wrap them in bacon. No, I'm not going to wrap them. If I had some bacon, I would. I don't know. It's kind of makes... like when you take a bell pepper and stuff it and cook it. Mm, more like, um, more like the jalapenos yes, without the cream bacon. cheese jalapenos. Yeah. So I'm just adding sausage to it, the deer sausage. Season, and not adding the bacon. Yeah, not adding the bacon and just letting them cook there on that little sweet pepper. I know you've seen those, like the those little sweet mini peppers. Oh yeah, tricolored. Yeah, little orange and red. That's the plan. They it's they kinda... should have those at Kroger. Yeah, they usually do. Yeah. Um, 
it's almost like a stuffed mushroom. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's meat and cream cheese. I mean, how could it be bad? Yeah. Yeah. I've done it before, like where I do the meat, cream cheese in between two layers of crescent roll dough, like Pillsbury crescent rolls and make it and you know, bake it and then cut it into little squares and it makes like a little party appetizer. Yeah. Well, it's the same filling that I use for that. I'm just going to stuff it on a sweet pepper. Okay. And you're using deer sausage instead of regular sausage? Yeah, yeah. You could use, if you got regular breakfast sausage, use that if you got it. Yeah, but for the um, grill grates, little breakfast sandwich, you're using just your mom's home homemade, country, yeah, homemade country sausage, sausage yep, yep. pork sausage. Probably going to use the same kind of sauce. No, I'm using deer in the one. That's why I yeah. use deer. So one's going to be deer and one's going to be pork, and then I'm doing the uh, pecan yeah, with the chimichurri. I'm going to make a little dip. What kind of dip? I haven't decided. There's some dip mixes left okay. over from uh, Christmas. So. That sounds good to me. <laughs> it's going to surprise you. So that's going to be the stay in cookout mm-hmm. this Saturday. If so, if you if you're interested in seeing what we're doing, I hope y'all get involved too. We'll be posting on our stories. Yeah, it's going to be stories. I mean, nothing complicated. If we mess if we mess it up, hey, we mess it up. Yeah, but it's going to be you know a lot of fun. Hopefully, the weather's going to be nice. We we'll get some sunshine. Get out, enjoy yourself, take your mind off things. Um, when it comes to sourcing stuff, I did have a note here. Um, local for where we are, we've got some butchers that still have plenty of meat, and they hadn't stopped. They hadn't ran out. Um, they've always had something. There's Brad up at the butcher block and uh, TK up at Raymond's. They've all back stock and just working hard as they can. And I know the grocery stores are probably getting back to most mm-hmm. normal levels on most stuff. But um, uh, – but, if you don't want to leave the house, there's a lot of great companies that will ship to you. Uh, one is Kevin down at the butcher shop. He's got just about anything you want. Like and he's crazy. source. If you don't have it, send him an email or a Facebook message or something. Um, other ones I've dealt with. Um, and then we're not, you know, I'm just telling y'all where I, where I get stuff. Um, we've got Creekstone Farms. They've got beef and pork. We've got for pork, Compart Family Farms is, is shipping. and They've got all kinds of stuff. Uh, chicken, if you can't find chicken, Springer Mountain Farms has it because we ordered some for the contest that we got canceled, but they had plenty of thighs and I'm sure they got chicken breasts and everything. So Springer Mountain Farms is a great source for that. Uh, Hassle Cattle Company out of Texas has the beef and I think they're shipping it too. They have good beef. It's really good. It's like a a Wagyu cross with the Angus and it's killer. We use their steaks at the World Foods. And everything I had from them has been fantastic. I know they got a lot of ton of ground beef products. Their brisket's phenomenal. Um, Snake River Farms is another good source uh, if you you know if you're looking for some high end. But they even have some some of their uh, prime stuff that's that's really good. And they've got some pork too. So there's some other places out there that you can get it delivered to you where you don't have to leave the house. Um, I would suggest don't wait until the weekend or the end of the week to order stuff because most of them only ship. Monday or Tuesday, just so they can get it to you fresh. I mean, most of them. That's that's for my personal dealing. Yeah, with you got to plan that on, ahead. Yeah, but plan ahead and think about it. But know those sources are out there. Um, ideas for next videos because we got some other stuff in ask, there. Yeah. So I already talked about the grilled chicken and sausage pasta jambalaya that yep, I'm doing today yep. for dinner. But that's um, not going to be your next week's video. Thing. Next week's video, I'm going to try to find, and I don't know, I don't have it yet, but I want to do like a chicken dinner. And it's one that we do all the time. We take just bone-in, skin-on, big chicken breast. We season them up. Shell usually throws them on a sheet pan. She quarters up some sweet potatoes and then takes some fresh broccoli. Uh, the, the sweet potatoes get roasted about halfway through the chicken cook. Chicken takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour, so she'll throw the sweet potatoes in about 30 minutes out, let them go 15 on their se- on their own on their separate. own yeah on another sheet yeah. uh, lined with full and then she'll throw the broccoli in there with it and then at the last twelve minutes or something like yeah. that and it all comes out about the same time and then you make this delicious sauce that I want to make and share with everybody it's like a it's honey mustard honey no it's Dijon mustard honey and a few little seasonings and it's really that's it and so you toss the sweet potatoes and broccoli you combine them in a yes. bowl after they cook and then drizzle them with that sauce and toss it and serve this just it's going to be like, I'm going to do like a smoke roasted chicken breast, simple, but it's a good dinner. And I think everybody that tries it will like it. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's a really good, it's something that we eat all the time that I've never done a recipe on. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Then I also, uh-uh. I've got some jerky. Uh, I've got some meat that I cut up I in the, the freezer. time to do jerky. You're at home. Yeah. So I'm going to do some jerky probably on the Traeger. Yeah. You know, they've got a good jerky recipe out there. I'm probably going to go off something like that and not get, not get crazy to show people how to make 
some simple eat and jerky. So out of some, you know, meat that you might already have in the freezer or something. Yeah. And see, jerky something that it, it takes a day. You know, you got to sit, th- oh, yeah, sit around the gotta, house for a day. Well, first you got to, you know, you, you have a whole cut. So you got to go get it and cut it up and marinate it overnight. Yeah. And then, you know, it takes a day to, you know, it's, it's every bit of six hours anyway, cooking it low. So while you're at home, perfect time to, perfect time to make jerky and then put it up. Yeah. You know, that um, broccoli and sweet potato recipe, we've always liked it. And we uh, served it. We were doing a holiday class. Yes. And so we, Out in Arizona. Yeah. In Arizona, we did a holiday class. I forgot what we served it with. Maybe ham. I think we did ham and, and the sweet potatoes and broccoli. And I didn't expect people to enjoy that recipe that much like we liked it we loved it at it's the good. house yeah but um people were emailing like can i get that recipe and it's simple it's when you see it you're simple. gonna be like wow this is something i can do anytime and, and kids, kids like even, it. yeah kids even like it yeah i guess it's got them. because of that honey mustardy element yeah I think it's so too. It, it has a sweetness that sweet potatoes are good yeah. they're kind of roasted they're and, roasted so. and then the broccoli is not your old boring old steam gross brock you know yeah. limp broccoli it's got some texture to it and it tastes really good yeah it's a great, great way to get your yeah. veggies in. It is. So that's what we're going to do. I got to be able to sort first. I got to source three things: chicken breast, broccoli, and sweet. <laughs> so that could change, y'all. It's just saying. But I'm I'm hoping that the click list <laughs> bring or let us get that because if we can find some chicken breast and bro- I know they got broccoli and sweet potatoes, surely. I think so too. So. I think they'll have chicken breast too. You but, might not get bone in skin on like typical, but we can. Figure something out. I could make do. I mean, it, don't, it may not be chicken breast. It may have chickens. It may be leg quarters, but it's. Or, yeah. I'm not doing. I'm just not doing straight thighs. I know you'd probably like that. <laughs> I'd love straight thighs. <laughs> but I can deal with leg quarters if I can find those. But that's my goal. That's what we want to try to do this week. And, uh, you know, keep on doing what we do. And I'm going to mm-hmm. try to share some more dinners that we cook. Yeah. As, they, as we come along. And, we'll see how this one goes tonight. We haven't done it yet. Yeah. Oh, you also have a beef loin in the fridge that came from Kevin. What you what you thinking about doing with that? Some fillets at some point, but I gotta cut it up. It's going back in the freezer. Yeah, it's still it's it it they come in. I'm aging it just a little bit. It's going in the freezer. I'm not gonna. That's that's for bad. Maybe I'll wait till we get through a quarantine to eat eat fillet. <laughs> I got a lot more older meat to go through. You know, you got to get on that cycle. You can't just go for everything you got on top. Oh, I know. You got to get it down in the deep part of that deep freeze. I cleaned out the deep freeze. Um, was it right after Christmas? Yeah. And put bags in when my there. When my deer mate started coming back from process, yeah, we had, we to, had to reorganize. Something out. Um, but I put bags in there, um, kind of heavy duty like fabric bags, tote bags. What yeah, I heavy duty tote bags. Makes and, finding stuff easier. Like if I want to yeah. pull something out, I can take that whole tote bag out and get in it. And I know deer meat's in this bag, pork's in this bag, fish is in this bag. I could, I'll probably do some fish next week too. Yeah, definitely. I plan on going fishing this afternoon. It's a beautiful day. I'm stop and give me some minners. <laughs> Take Michael down there. We're going to get us some sunlight. I may even put a, two or three beers in a cooler. What? That's the plan, though. Oh, damn. But that's all I got. That. Does that sound fun to you? Yes, that uh, sounds great. All right. Well, what else do we have, Shell? Anything else today? Um, No, I have. <laughs> that's, uh, that's all That's it. Notes. I couldn't right. stop thinking about. Tiger King. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Y'all, what you would are, think it'd be the virus and, you know, hey. the shut down and everything. No, it's a crazy man in Oklahoma. Yeah, y'all know. <laughs> I don't think, I'm pretty sure he's still locked up. He is, as far as I uh, know. I'm, i got to start doing research. I, I keep thinking about it. At least you ain't thinking about a virus. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> well, hey, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us today. And um, hope everybody's, you know, doing well, staying safe at home. And hopefully this will, you know pass on through and we'll it be will. back to business as normal here in a few weeks but yeah we're gonna gotta, keep on doing what we do and, you gotta uh, say um you can't sit around and be sad that's right it, that does nobody any good you got to think about you know that's it you got to think about the uh blessings you do have and focus on that and keep on keeping on you're positive that's why i'm married <laughs> <laughs> no but y'all let's stay in and cook out this weekend yeah we'll be on there saturday where can they find us y'all? if you'd like to connect with uh malcolm it's how to bbq right on facebook instagram twitter and youtube if you'd like to connect with me it's miss southern shell on instagram and twitter hey fun hanging out with y'all today I'll try to keep my sanity see y'all next time <laughs>